This graph shows cable prices by year. The average cable bill in the U.S. has increased four times the inflation rate over the past five years. Today, the average cable bill is over $100. So are you surprised by this graph? As of 2018, 22 million American adults have cut the cord, and it's estimated cable companies will lose over 4% of their subscribers in 2018. Cable TV transformed the world. And for almost 60 years, telecommunication companies dominated the media landscape. But times have changed, and so have viewer options. So what happened? Three, two, one, happy 2000! Welcome to the year 2000, the golden age of cable. It's the year traditional cable subscriptions peaked, 68.5 million in total. Cable companies had nothing to fear. Little did they know, the stage was set for their demise. In most areas of the U.S., there is hardly competition when it comes to cable. And in New York City, even though there are four providers, your options can depend on the block you live on. This has allowed cable companies to raise prices exponentially without the motivation to improve their product. Take customer service, for example. Telecommunication companies have the longest average hold time of any industry. We haven't seen anything like this probably since the Great Depression. Peak frustration hit in 2008 as the country was feeling the effects of the recession. It's also around this time that cable companies finally had a real problem, competition. Makes it a double beginning at 5 o'clock tomorrow only on Channel 4. For over half a century, TV schedules dictated viewer schedules. But in 2007, Although Netflix had been around since 1997, they only launched their Watch Instantly feature in 2007, and it took off. But they weren't alone. Other SVOD, or streaming video on-demand services, followed suit. Here is where we see subscriptions really begin to drop. That's not all. At around the same time, we begin to see a rise in hardware. Prior to Roku, Chromecast, or Apple TV, if you wanted to stream something, you gathered around your desktop. Thanks to this new hardware, SVOD subscribers had the ability to watch streaming services on their living room TVs. By 2010, cable companies were feeling the effects. The industry's growth slowed to just above 0%. And things were only getting worse for them. On average, American adults with cable subscriptions get access to over 200 channels, but watch less than 10% of them. Enter the Skinny Bundle. It's an over-the-top service that allows you to pick and choose the channels or programs you want through any internet connection. Take Philo, for example. You can get a package of 37 channels for $16 a month. Channels you'll actually watch, like HGTV, Food Network, Comedy Central, and of course, Cheddar. Even live sports programming, which cable has long laid claim to, is slowly being added to these bundles. FUBU TV, which began as a soccer-only bundle, now offers 80 sports channels like NFL Network, NBC Sports Network, and NBA TV for $45 a month. So the problem is more than just the price. It's paying for what you don't want. As cord cutting continues to increase, cable companies are now facing potentially their biggest obstacle yet, cord nevers. While millennials grew up on Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, and ABC Family, Generation Z is growing up on YouTube. Now they're starting to live on their own and they're not buying cable. Hence, cord nevers. By 2021, 30% of all Americans won't pay for traditional TV, 81 million people in total. Finally, cable companies are beginning to react. In September of 2017, Comcast launched Xfinity Stream. It's an $18 streaming service aimed to rival skinny bundles like Sling and Philo. But is it too little too late? What's the future for cable companies? Are you a cord cutter or a cord never? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.